Hey out there, it's that guy, and um, I'd like to tell you a story about a guy who told a lot of stories. His name is Harold Birdholder, and uh, he's my wife's grandfather, and everyone called him Berkey. So, old Berkey uh, was a storyteller. He told a lot of stories in his life. And uh, all of them were in good fun. If they were misleading in any way, they were for everyone's enjoyment. But he was also full of a lot of knowledge also. Taught a lot of people to hunt and fish. Kids, you know. Just a wonderful grandfather. Um, Berkey also Berkey'd things. Um, he used caulking and duct tape. Like uh, MacGyver, you know. And, uh, you know... We have the saying around here that um, everything's been burkied, you know. Something's been cobbled together or whatever. Uh, it's been burkied. Now, before Berkey, or Burke, was out of um, high school, his father passed away. And uh, he had to quit school and go to work on the family farm to support his mother and his younger siblings. Um, the family farm that he worked on uh, was his family's farm. When I say that, I mean uh, the Bergholder family came from Pennsylvania in the early 1800s, I mean 1810, 1815, um, and had purchased a portion of a uh, land grant that a Revolutionary War soldier had been awarded in the Ohio country. So um, they came here from Pennsylvania, and uh, they built a barn and they built a farm. The barn still stands today. Uh, Native American chestnut beams, the biggest beautiful uh, chestnut beams you've ever seen. Uh, my father-in-law is a very good carpenter and he's preserved that barn as a legacy. My wife was the uh, seventh generation of the Bergholder family to grow up in that farmhouse, you know, on, on that farm. So um, Burke, I would only assume, learn to uh, Berkey things by uh, <laughs> by necessity, you know. You just got to make it work. So Burke made it work. Now, which brings me to the reason for this current video is um, when Burke passed away, uh, you know, the family kind of divvied up the uh, hunting, fishing, and just nostalgic things that um, they, they would have liked. And there were some guns, you know, they went to the cousins as they should, the uh, children and grandchildren and stuff. But um, the one thing that no one seemed to want was this muzzleloader here. And this is a, a Connecticut Valley Arms black powder only 45 caliber. And um, this muzzleloader would have been one that he bought from a catalog Cabela's, Dunn's, you know, whichever catalog. Who knows when this thing was bought? Maybe the serial number could tell me something. Probably won't. Um, and I think he just burkied the heck out of this thing. I think he put it together. I don't think it's ever been shot. Uh, I know there's stain on the buttstock, but um, I don't think that uh, one ounce of elbow grease or sandpaper has come in contact with this weapon. This thing is um, rough, but I don't think it's been shot. And, um, you know, Berkey Berkey this, and uh, had he had a, you know, occasion to, I'm sure he would have used it. I mean, it's in usable uh, condition, but um, I'm not gonna Berkey it. I think what I'm gonna try to do is I've got, um, got about a month until muzzleloader season here in Ohio starts and uh, I can shoot one more doe and um, I think it would be pretty awesome to finish this a little bit and um, go out and shoot a doe sometime with it when, during the primitive weapon season so that's what this uh, month is going to be spent doing I'm probably not going to do a video on all the little things I do, but uh, maybe we'll do a before and after. And um, 
we'll see just just what we could do with this thing. I'm I'm kind of looking forward to seeing um, where this thing could end up after where it started. So I hope that um, you guys will enjoy the journey as much as I enjoy going on the journey, and um, hopefully in the end I'll be giving you a uh, a little uh, rundown of what happened during the successful hunt. So. Here we go. Thanks for tuning in. update uh, of course this isn't a how-to video this is just uh, what I do video um, done a lot of sanding it was quite difficult to be honest with you because uh, Grandpa Burke had stained the wood without um, sanding it so in the low spots uh, there's still some places that are holding some stain but I think for uh, my purposes um, this is where I'm going to start. Hey everyone, it's time for an update on Grandpa Berkey's muzzleloader kit that I've been uh, restoring here. Uh, I got it finished, as finished as it's ever going to be, which, you know, to be honest with you, turned out pretty nice. It was really fun, it was a lot of work, and it was a great learning experience. Um, so what I'll do is I'll kind of show you how it looks now that it's um, in its finished state. And I've already been shooting it a little bit here this afternoon and uh, it shoots really good with a round ball and patch. Tomorrow is the opening day of muzzleloader season here in Ohio which boy we've really come right under the wire. I mean we're sighted it in the day before, the afternoon before, which um, hey if we're gonna slide under the wire better not you know not miss it. So we got this and uh, I don't know, it's been real fun, so here we go, let's see what happens next. It's uh, the inaugural hunt with Grandpa Berkey's uh, CVA muzzleloader kit. She's finished and shot in. It's about 7 in the morning. I'm fixing to go off behind my house here to my farm. And uh, I normally don't shoot does on my place, which 
maybe in the future I'll get into the reasoning behind that. But uh, I'm going to go see if I can get a dough at this muzzle loader here to uh, honor Grandpa Burke a little bit and have a little bit of fun here late season. I'm ready. Muzzle loader's ready. I'm going to take the long, dark walk out to my tree stand and uh, I'll give you a view when I get up there. Hey everyone. I got a deer behind me. Looks like it's coming my way. So I need to get ready here. Yeah, looks like it's coming my way. Boy, I hope it's not a buck. Hell, he's got to be patient. Boy, I hate when it happens like this when you see him a long way away. And you got to wonder whether they're coming in. Oops. Couldn't have seen me move all the way back up here. I really love my little piece of property here. It's quite diverse. Um, I have my stream that runs past my house and it joins over there, there's a Y. And two streams join and then run down through here. And uh, Sarah sees mink, I see mink. And this, everyone, is a mink run. Look at that. Wise off right there. Really makes my heart sing knowing that uh, my little piece of land here supports all kinds of wildlife. Cool things like mink. That's pretty awesome. All the deer rubs here, you know, let, let me know that there's deer in the area. I'm doing a good job providing a home. There's a little bit more rubbing, probably some younger deer, younger bucks. Hey everybody, we're going back out. It's the afternoon, it's about maybe quarter after three or so. About time to go sneak out these fence rows and go take a wild guess on where I think a deer is going to walk 30 yards or less from me get set up before they start coming out into the cornfields so you guys hang in there
nice little buck, but we're not after a box. Hey everybody, it's about go time. That buck's out there with about five does. So, uh, we'll just have to see if luck comes our way. That just happened, man. So we did it. We totally took apart an old kit gun from Grandpa Burke. Finished it in his honor and uh, came out a couple times and made it work. That's spectacular. Uh, I'm uh, I'm at a loss for words. Grandpa Burke was a heck of a man. He was loving and sharing and funny and lovable and goofy. He was a great father. He was a great grandfather, and uh, I only have the fondest of memories of him. And uh, all that we've done the past couple weeks has been just to honor the memory of him as a sportsman. And uh, in uh, in keeping in that vein. Old Burke was that guy. He was that guy that would twist a tail, make you laugh, make you question what you think you knew. He was that guy who got it done for himself and his family. And uh, I'm very honored to be a part of his family and to at least tell a little bit of his story. And as the sun sets on the close of my 2019 deer season, I want everyone to know that I am so very thankful for all my Creator has provided me, all the opportunities that my family has provided me, and uh, I hope my past videos and then hopefully plenty of future videos uh, that I can share with you, I hope to influence you to be more thankful in your lives. Because only when you're thankful for the moment you're in can you truly enjoy life for what it is. It's a moment to moment 
You enjoy what you have. Love who you're with. Work as hard as you can. At the end of the at the end of the day when you put your head down, just be thankful for your life. And next day I'll start the same way. So I'm sending all you good vibes. I got some good vibes too. And I also have a lot of hard work to do. So take care. We'll see you next time.